The background picture that you see, this is the village of Doloka. But this is the village, 90% uh, of the Nepalese villages, wherever you go. This is how it looks like. And the houses are similar, challenges are similar. And when earthquake hit Nepal, the second epicenter was Doloka. None of the house was spared. And the reason is very simple, because if you build the way we are used to build, this is going to be the result, right? Your context is very important. If you have a lot of people who are living in the house, you can't get a lot of people who are living in the house. You can't get a lot of people who are living in the house. You can't get a lot of people who are living in the house. You can't get a lot of people who are living in the house. You can't get a lot of people who are living in the house. तो त्यो कॉस्टले बनाऊंगे वन निक्रम में हम लोग टू डेज यूथ एशिया संघ को यो लामो पार्टनरशिप लामो समय देखी काम करने क्रम में यो आइडिया था नहीं एकदम रामरो लागियो रस सोचिए कि संसार को ये वड़ा रामरो विश्वविद्यालय में गनी ने स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी लाइक इन नली ने यो चीज में यो हम लोग रामरो हॉट कोल्ड सावर बैग को रतियो सोचाले को वेस्ट और उपनी कम से कम पर्यावरण लाई हानि नगर ने कुरारो आज दे ही सोचो वने हमरो प्रत्येक गांव और उचाई ये वटा पांच तारे डेस्टिनेशन बने ने सक्षम टूरिज्म को लागी विदेशी को लागी मात्रा इन्हें स्वदेशी को लागी कैथवांडो में बस ने कती जाना चाहन यो जून प्रोग्राम हो स्टैनफोर्ड संग आज बनियो ये सौरथ में आमी यार वहाँ संग गयी हूँ ये इसको चुनौती को बारे तो वहाँ आर लेपनी बन्नु नहीं होने चा डेफिनेटली यो डिजाइन यार वो ये वड़ा रेफरेंस हो रो यो रेफरेंस ये सौरथ में मले रेफरेंस बने को यार वो मध्य कसाईलाई पनी मेरो � We're really excited to share for you our project called Developing Dalaka. Our vision for the project was this, to develop earthquake-resistant designs for a village house and guest house in order to kickstart economic growth and promote eco-conscious living. The site visit was actually incredibly informative because it really um, showed us what the villagers um, would most benefit from. And through interviews with them and just talking to them, we were able to identify two main conceptual ideas that drove the design. One is to have an open common space, and two is to have a flexible private space. We found that um, we had to really prioritize creating an open social space in our design. We really wanted to include a, a bigger social space in our design. We achieved this by um, creating a bigger, taller open space that would function as both the kitchen, the living room, and the dining room. So the blue boxes in the back are the private living quarters, and this red space out front is the taller, one and a half story tall um, common space. And this is a cross section of the house. Um, you can see the taller um, kitchen, living, dining space in the front, and stairs that lead up to the two floors of private space in the back. And here are some renderings of the outside. And by placing them into a digital model, we were able to uh, actually experience through, uh, by sort of looking around this taller common space, what it's like to actually be inside that space. Um, and so these digital tools really helped us understand how the architectural concepts, as well as the structural engineering design that we'll talk about later, and the windows and openings and the furniture layout sort of look in our design. But there are some strategies that we can employ to, to try and limit this, these temperature swings inside the house. If we design our overhangs such that they don't, the, the roof overhang, such that it does not block the sun as it's coming in at a winter angle, we can let that sun into the house and let it heat the house through the windows. But we want to make sure the overhang shades the summer sun so as not to let the house get too hot in the summer. Here's looking at the southern wall of our building in the winter. As you can see, the entire southern wall was not covered by shadows and light was able to enter the windows, keeping it warm. In the summer, you can see that the southern wall is completely shaded throughout the day. So this can help keep the house cool. One of the key design ideas we incorporated was something called thermal comfort. It describes the conditions in which you might feel too hot, too cold, or comfortable within a space. So some of the design strategies we incorporated to address thermal comfort included the following. So one of the things we incorporated was to figure out materials that were high in thermal mass and insulation. On the other hand, insulation is a type of material that prevents the release of heat from your space. 
So if it's really cold at night and you don't want to lose all of the heat that you've created over the course of your day, a material high-end insulation, so something like wood or rock wool, would do really well at preventing your house from getting cold while you're sleeping. Another design strategy we incorporated was something called cross-ventilation. And this idea is pretty simple. Opening up windows and doors on opposite sides of your house in order to let more flow of air occur through the area of your house. So uh, the last thing we wanted to look into was strategies for active heating, essentially using energy to heat your space. So one of the things that we wanted to do was um, develop something called radiant heating. And the idea of radiant heating is this. Use the walls, the ceiling, the floors of your space to gradually release warmth into your room at an even rate. We discussed some uh, basic parameters that we decided we would follow so that when we got into more uh, detailed design, the house would be naturally more, uh, more easily earthquake resistant. Yeah, so the, the primary thing that we did, is, as Andrew mentioned, is we decided to build on flat ground. Flat ground and so sloped ground were both available to us on the site. Uh, but given the, the unpredictability of soil strength on sloped grounds and the unavailability of geotechnical information, uh, we decided that it was most wise to build on flat ground. Another thing we did is we kept our uh, building footprint close to square and symmetric, and we avoided using any irregular shapes or any rooms that are too long and too thin. We wanted to use as many local materials as possible. Most of the houses that we observed during our visit to Silung were made out of mud, stone, and a little bit of wood. We wanted to use the same materials in our house to maintain that f feel and look of a regular village, the local architecture. So we decided to make the structural system of the house out of pine wood. Although wood is more expensive than mud and stone, it can resist the f tensile forces that arise during an earthquake much better than mud and stone can. The structural system that we decided to use is called Daji Dewari. It consists of a timber frame with mud and stone filling the gaps between the timber. So the concept is that there is a timber frame for supporting the gravity loads. And these diagonal braces are the primary lateral system. That is, they are the primary way that earthquake forces are resisted. And then in between the triangular spaces between the diagonal braces, you fill with mud and stone. Now, the main purpose of the mud and stone is for insulation and enclosure. A large concern that we had in the vision for this ecotourist village is to uh, maintain the environmental, or, or I guess more, preserve the environmental uh, impact of the design. So the digester essentially inputs waste from livestock, agriculture, plants, um, also humans. Uh, and when this waste is combined and mixed in the pit uh, at very specific temperatures and pressures, you get uh, raw biogas, which can be piped to a stovetop burner. Um, and the outputs, of course, are active culture or fertilizer for the agriculture. Three key points sort of highlight the reasoning for uh, implementing a biogas digester design. The first is to eliminate fuel dependence. Um, it's very difficult and expensive to import uh, LPG up into the high mountain regions. Secondly, improved air quality in the kitchen. We hope that the digester design will be um, an option for employment, to employ local workers. This is a topographical view of the digester. It's located slightly downhill from the kitchen dining structure. We decided to put rainwater collection systems on both the village homes and the guest houses. We think it's a really great, easy, and cost-effective way to collect and store water, especially in the winter months when it rains less frequently. Gardnirman Gardnidman Gori 
कुइने न कुइने बस्तो रु छुट्टी आउने पूरा इसलाय डे डिजॉल्व करना सकी नहीं फोर रा पूरा प्रोजेक्ट में लाऊना सकी नहीं रा फिर ही तेला रिसाइकल करे रो पनी प्रोजेक्ट में लाऊना सकी नहीं सरीले उन्हों बाको सा यो गांव घर को लागे आते इंतई नौ लो गांव घर में जो पढ़े लिखे का छाइनन किसान और को लागे आते इंतई नौ लो कुरा औरा इसके आते इंतई रामरो ये उटा हमरो गांव घर में इसकी नहीं फोर लाइक कसरी व्यवस्था पन करना शकिंस है बनी कुरा को ये उटा शिक्षा दे को सा गांव घर में गौर है इर्दा खेरी खाने पानी को तें तो ठुलो समस्या सा तेज मो पनी बोल खा जिला ये उटा हाइड्रो पावर आप जिला पनी हो तारो पनी कती पाई गावी सारुमा चा इस तो सागी अरे गेस्ट आउट स्टेज मान कर देगी तो मलाई लागे कि ये कार निर्माण का ये उड़ा चाहे मलाई आराम रो लागे कुछ इक्के लागे वन्ना खेरी दूध पार्टी बेडरूम बाको कोठा रा बीच चाको कोठा चाहे लिविंग रूम आली आल को तेज में पानी गाम छीरना शकी नहीं रा बेडरूम बाटा पानी जस्ते हिमाल को सीन और उद्रिष्य और अवलोकन करना सके नहीं हिमाल देखी नहीं ठाव वाटा अतिन तो राम रोद्रिष्य और अवलोकन करना सके नहीं गांव प्रत्यक्ष रूप में छिड़ना सके नहीं योग हाल को कौन सी अवलयान हुआ कौन सा ये पनी अतिन तो राम रो कराओ